uh, close the gap and try and work their way up the fleet for a medal. Nakada and Hokazono currently sitting third. This is, comes back to pretty much what we were talking about, sort of who's going to take medals at the games, who's going to come away with this. Well, this shows the depth in it is so close. This breeze staying strong at sort of nine and a half. Not still sort of in around 315, 310. So uh, fairly consistent. And you can see the whole fleet all jibing now onto port. And just uh, again, now it's become a bit more of a, a speed race again with that sort of shift round. It's all going to be about uh, technique, speed, who's got the right setup. The right okay. Hello, everybody. Uh... We are talking about uh, free kinetics, yes or no. This is the second Snipe Today video conference. I will start with the first round of questions to all of you. Uh, the first question is uh, quite general. And uh, after uh, watching the video of the 470 guys in, at the Miami OCR uh, going upwind with the uh, with the uh, rocking, that uh, strange movement like uh, Elvis the pelvis, I called it, <laughs> and uh, going downwind uh, with a lot of rocking and pumping. And uh, so my first question is, uh, what is sailing uh, for you, generally speaking? Because looking at the rules, the basic rule, 42.1, it states, except when permitted in Rule 42.3 or 45, a boat shall compete by using only the wind and water to increase, maintain, or decrease her speed. Her crew may adjust the trim of sails and hull and perform other acts of seamanship, but shall not otherwise move their bodies to propel the boat. So the first question is for Ogi. Uh, what is sailing for you, Augie? Well, I think it's it, both things are sailing. I I think we have to go back, and I don't want to be very long-winded, but we have to go back to what the situation is. And I think at the Olympic level, uh, and I have the experience of sailing with open kinetics in the Star Sailors League finals, it's really an advantage for the young people and for the stronger people. So I think we have to uh, first talk about the different levels of sailing and where that would be applied. I fall short of calling it not sailing, what you saw the Spanish uh, kids do in the, um, in the 470. I think it takes an incredible amount of skill and you could readily see that the Japanese team would not, was not able to match and the Spanish kids flew by them. So I, I'm, I fall short of not calling sailing. That being said, not just because of my age, but because I think you need to be more inclusive in sailing. We need to be very careful about saying that, okay, because we want to make it good for young people, then we're going to open up sailing to be a more physical event. But I call it both sailings. Uh, both, it's all sailing. I don't. I fall short of saying that the what the Spanish kids were doing uh, was not sailing. Okay, so Pedro, what do you think? Is this sailing? Yes, I totally agree with Augie. This is sailing. Um, I just want to add that uh, sailing upwind in snipes is something that already makes it different from you strong guys uh, than masters and having the possibility of having a, a, a free pumping or uh, more freedom in pumping downwind can have masters or people that are not as in good shape as the young guys uh, get some little uh, shortening the disadvantage of the upwind where they are really stronger than, than, than masters. So, in some way, uh, if we release pumping, uh, 
people who are not in such a good shape upwind can at least not lose uh, the same they are losing upwind in snipe selling. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pedro, now uh, I will ask uh, the same question to Victor. Victor, what do you think? This is still sailing or is another sport? And uh, what do you think? Well, I think it is sailing because at the end of the day, they are sailing in a boat uh, with the wind. The question is maybe if this is the kind of sailing that we like because it's obviously sailing with different rules or not applying some rules that we normally apply in the snap class. So I would say it's sailing. And I think the big question is, is this kind of sailing something that we want? And if we do want it with every condition or with any condition at all. So I would say it's sailing. It takes uh, a lot of physical uh, shape, but I think it also takes a lot of technique. So um, I agree with Hoggy that that makes a difference between something, someone in better shape or worse, but it also makes a lot of difference between people better trained and more prepared than others. And yeah, I think same than foiling. It is sailing. It's not obviously nothing to do with the way we sail, but this uh, kind of sailing, if it's something we have to think about if we want it or not, before saying if it's sailing or not, I would say. Okay, thank you. Uh, Antonio, what do you think? Well, according to the racing rules of sailing, everything can be sailing because moving your body is using something to improve your speed according to waves, to wind, to the sailing trim and so on. But my question is, do we want to limit or, or not any kind of movement? That is the question because everything is sailing. Falling is sailing, rocking is sailing, pumping is sailing, uh, playing with the waves is sailing, downwind, upwind, everything can be called sailing. But uh, the, the question is, do we want limit? At what point won't we limit uh, the body movement, the trimming movement, and so on? Hmm. Okay, Kathleen? Kathleen, join us right now. Kathleen, can you hear us? I can hear you, Keito. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. <laughs> um, I, I missed a little of what Augie said. Um, what I'd like to add was, in, in the past, I think in major championships, we've seen a lot of kinetics, especially among the top teams. And I felt this year at the Worlds in Rio, that I thought the fleet was pretty well under control from what I saw um, in terms of kinetics and pumping and rocking. And I know, for example, the teams that I sail with would normally benefit from having a no kinetics rule. But I think that the most important thing when making any decisions or changes for the class at this point in time is if, if a change will attract more people to the class, if it will increase the participation in events, then it, it can be a good thing. But I think if, if we make a change and it doesn't help attract people and we lose people, then that's a bad thing. So I would look at every decision I would make for the class with this respect. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Ricardo, Blue, what do you think? Hey, uh, I agree. Uh, sailing, we have different games. You know, when you are sailing in a lake, in light winds, the game is different from Ilabella with a strong wind and one tack to the right, you know, all the other way to the lay line. We have uh, many games inside the, our squad, okay? It's, it's, it can be different. Of course, you know, we are not going to, go to uh, I, I agree with the inclusion, but we are not going to forbidden or hiking. Maybe you can limit the wind speed or, but, um, uh, what I think we have to discuss that uh, I think we have a strong uh, product, a strong class. We have a, a good game that uh, is, is a tactical boat with some uh, physical requirements. Okay, but it's still, uh, uh, you know, one of the. I, I think the game you are playing, it's most. Uh, uh, it's a mix of tactical and technical. I, I don't think you have to go all the way to the technical side, you know, the, the pump and the strong. But I think you, you have a good balance nowadays. Okay, thank you. 
So now we can go to the second part, to the second question that uh, regard the effectiveness of uh, Rule 42. So the question is, for the SNIPE class, of course, is this rule generally respect? And if not, can we enforce this rule? So I will ask uh, these questions to Ogi. Ogi? So I think generally in the SNIPE class, we're pretty good. Um, I think mostly that at the, at the worlds where it's really important uh, with judging, we're able to control. I think regard, Ricardo's effort to outline uh, what happens in the boat is very important to continue to um, scrub that and, and make that meaningful for the judges. Uh, but I think I agree with Kathleen that at the worlds this year, um, we were pretty well behaved. I think that what you don't want to do is make it about the umpires or make it about the judges. If you get into a regatta and you come back from the, to the dock and everybody's talking about the judges and how they judged, that's a bad thing. You know, generally most of us competitors understand when we have committed an infraction or we went pulled it off. I've been flagged myself in situations where I didn't think I was guilty. And what I, would, what I generally do is I ask the guys around me. I say, hey, did you think I was being too active and stuff? And some say yes, some say no. So it's not always a black and white thing. But I think if we have good judging and if we do more of what Ricardo's trying to do with trying to make sure that our, our judges are understanding how the snipe sails, and how the snipe moves, then I think we have a, a really good situation and I think status quo should remain. But I agree with Kathleen that any decision we make, it has to be put up against how do we increase participation? How do we grow the class? Because I think we're in a, we're challenged right now in a world where sailing is contracting and there's a lot of classes and there's a lot of classes that are easier. The big problem, there's two big problems with a snipe. One is that the snipe is a hard boat to sail. It's like the laser. You have to hike and you have to be prepared to expand, expand a lot of energy, you know? And the other was, the other thing that's really bad, which was one of the reasons I was glad to be clobbered at the Worlds this year, is we have too many old guys like myself that can beat the young guys. And this is a detriment to a lot of the guys coming into our class, you know? So I think anything we do in terms of modifying rule 42 or how we go forward needs to be measured against whether it will help us grow the class or not. Because the, the most important thing is to grow the class. And, and I agree with Kathleen on this matter. Anything we do needs to be measured against that. Thank you, Augie. Pedro. I totally agree with, with Ogi and Kathleen. And the question is that the problem will never be in the world's or European's or Western Hemisphere championships. The problem is that 95% of races are being do, done without umpires or with local umpires that never sail the snipe. So the question is uh, the problem we will have is during these races. And most of these competitors will never go to world championship because the quarters of each country is very small. So Spain, 250 boats, six boats can go to the worlds. The, 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 the guy that's in number 10 in the ranking is a very good guy and he's not fighting for going to the worlds and he's doing all the regattas and 95% of regattas won't have umpires or umpires that are not uh, trained. They, they, they don't know the class, they don't have anybody like Ricardo helping them to tell what we, how we work, how we, how we used to do things. So I totally agree with, with Kathleen, but if the real snipe world is sailing without umpires, 
and everybody's doing whatever they want. Uh, it's, it's, we should ask what we have to do because the everyday race is not the same than the world's. Okay, thank you, Pedro. Uh, Kathleen, uh, what about uh, if uh, regarding the effectiveness of uh, Rule 43, 42, and uh, if it is necessary that for uh, respect the, these rules, you need the judges or uh, sometimes uh, and some regatta more, or of, more uh, often or not, the, the sailors themselves as, uh, have the ability to, to stay inside the rules, to auto, like an auto-regulation. Um, that's, almost, that's almost two different things. Um, there's, in my experience, um, in the United States, we have a group of judges that are most often at our national regattas, our big regattas, and these judges know the class very well. And these are the type of judges who will come to you and say, you were, you were definitely in yellow all day, or, but they know the class. So I think it's really important if you want to effectively police re rule 42 with judges and make it fair that the class needs to use judges that are very familiar with our class. Um, and there are people who do that. And I think you also need judges who are familiar with sailing small dinghies. So I don't think it helps us to have a keel boat in an IJ on, in a major championship for a snipe class. So I think choosing the best judges for a class is really important to make it fair. I also know that when the wind speeds reach the higher limits, where, for example, we're on triangles, most judges' boats can't go fast enough on reaches to stay with the competitors. Um, and that's usually when they're pumping the most and using their body the most is in big breeze. Um, it's hard for them to go up wind fast. It's hard for them to go on the reaches. So they can't effectively police it in heavy wind. So that would be the only time I, I would personally say like downwind on reaches and heavy air that I would allow it like after 17, um, but I wouldn't want it upwind. And I think that there's, there's a few people in the class who do too much kinetics and we know who they are. And um, I don't think you can stop that, but I think the class in general has an idea about who's doing what. And, I th and people will say things if you're doing too much. I mean, I think Lu Luis has said some things to me, maybe once. <laughs> but I think the class in general is doing a good job of policing it. It's not the same in every country. Um, and judges are really expensive, so we don't want to have to have judges be the ones policing our class all the time because no one can afford judges. It makes all the regards expensive. Uh, but choosing the, if we just choosing the best judges who know the class and know how well in general is, I think, what is most effective. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Antonio? Okay, uh, well, I believe that 95% of the snipe sailors respect the rule. Uh, we, can, we can have sailors in uh, uh, local regatta, so in championship, an in international championship who does not respect the rule. Um, but I believe that regarding enforcement or not of the rule, we can have two scenarios. Uh, if uh, we... Uh, uh, if we, if we don't allow any kinetics, or if we allow free kinetics, we don't need judges. If we allow uh, at different levels uh, kinetics, we will need uh, judges. And, uh, and that means that most of the regattas, or the most important regattas, will have judges. And you all know that if you have judges, the judgment can be different. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have a list of movement and an explanation on how the class uh, is and what is allowed or what is not allowed. Uh, but I I always believe that uh, if you allow kinetics and not free kinetics, but if you allow 
some kinetics, you will always need judges, and this is the main problem, because there will always be a discussion uh, on how judges uh, uh, decide if you are yellow or you are not yellow. Okay, thank you, Antonio. Victor, what do you think? Uh, I think that obviously the rule 42 it's effective because nobody sails, let's say, with complete uh, freedom. But I think we're still a bit far from uh, having completely fair sailing. And I think there's several things that make these unfair situations. First is that it all depends a lot in the jury's criteria. When you begin a big championship with juries and you have Lightwood, for example, at the beginning and you see a lot of penalties, all the sailors are going to behave differently than if you had people pumping and the juries are just looking somewhere else or not uh, putting any penalties. So the sailors also adapt to the juries and, and I think we all agree this is a reality. And I think it's very difficult for, for several reasons. First is that I think that especially the top sailors, they have made their technique adapted to the jury's criteria. So at the end, they are pumping or they are accelerating the boat using their body movement without getting whistled, which I also think it's unfair. And at the same time, it's very difficult for the juries to see everyone. I mean, if the juries are looking at the mark rounding because they want to see a uh, rule 10 or 14, it's easier because there is one mark, you have two or three or four briefs, it's easy that they see all the fleet, but to see all the fleet and if they are pumping or not in a 70, 80 boats fleet, it's almost impossible. So I think at the same time that people might be uh, pumping or rocking in a technique that the juries cannot see, there's also people that when the juries are not uh, looking, they are pumping more. So I think it's very difficult to, to have a real control of the whole fleet. And that's what I think that, I mean, the snipe is very physical anyways, above 12 or 14 or 15 knots. So I would say if this was free, it would probably st still be the same sailors that would be better because it's already very physical with a rule for two, but it would be more fair because it would be the same for everyone. Thank you. Luis, uh, so is this rules generally respected? No, uh, it's not. We have a, a big improvement the last decade in respecting the rule, but uh, I agree. Uh, with the general opinion, it is not fully respected. It's like 90, 95%, which is a lot if you compare to 20 years ago. Uh, also, the, the juries are much better now than 10 years ago, and they are becoming better and better and more professional. Uh, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, the, the, if you remove the rule, you never, you never get rid of the, of the juries because most classes that have free kinetics, they have it uh, from a level of win, eight knots, 10 knots, or when the conditions are good for surfing. They, they are not free kinetics from zero win all the way. So they, they, they have the juries anyway. Uh, I think that our class changes a lot if you allow free kinetics. I don't think it will be fair for everyone because the top sailors will, of course, know how to move much better than uh, the other sailors. And uh, I think that the mistake we are, uh, we are making is that thinking that free kinetics will, me will mean, uh, I don't know, a hooch or a two pumping, so three or four pumping. No, it will not be that. If you allow me free kinetics, downwind in almost every condition, I will be standing on my boat with my foot on the front deck, pushing, standing on the boat, the boat down wind. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, my crew will be doing kind of the same. And if we are in a light wind condition, I will rock the boat, like the pole to the water and the boom to the water, like we used to do in the 80s, where I start sailing snipe. People sail it that way, down wind. And the, the whole class, the whole sport gets, gets absolutely, it's, it's all a sport. I, I don't think that is sailing, okay. is what we do, or, or at least what I like to do in snipe. Thank you, Luis. Ricardo. Uh, we, we have, a, I, I see two points. One uh, at big events where we have the, the judge. The system is not perfect, okay? Uh, judge can, can miss a, a sailor or two. Judge can give a wrong penalty 
maybe they, they can't understand, but I think this is a, it's uh, as some, someone said, it's an evolution. And uh, if, if you see the, the laser class, you know, people are doing a lot of rock and roll, and uh, it's harder to, to judge it, to, to catch them, because you know, they're playing on the rules, what they can do or what they can, can't do. So it's it's a game, you know. It's a, and then you need to to train, you know. And and that's just at a, at a low event uh, in Brazil. Have a different uh, uh, situation for Italy, for example. In Brazil, there's night class in the main class, so we have it, people who understand the rules and uh, probably better than the judge. You know, <laughs> we have a. a a strong crit that that's control themselves, you know, pretty okay. So, but this this a, a particular situation in in some place. But I I believe that there is always someone that can understand the rule and you uh, know and push and explain and, and make the game better in, in small fleets, you know, in small in locally. Okay, thank you. So now I think. Uh, we already answered that regarding uh, this question that I prepare. Can it benefit even more professional? So freaking at it. Can it benefit even more professional or more athletic crews? Or at least even now yeah. in certain condition, the professional and the most athletic prevail? Ogi. Yes. Yeah. So I think already the most athletic prevail. I think uh, the the boat, the snipe, really, when you look at the different classes, the snipe is nearly as physical as the laser. Yet, we're able to attract old guys like myself, other people that are in, in, in not necessarily the best shape and are allowed, to sail com are, are allowed to sail somewhat competitively. I don't think we need a big change. I think our class uh, needs to continue to uh, develop better ways to try to control. Uh, and a comment to Pedro's of at the local level or in their small regattas, I think that's very dependent on uh, how how we behave. There is very dependent on the on the actual top sailors themselves to call each other out and to make sure that the fleet is sailing according to the rules. We do that locally. I'm always you know, going back and forth with Ernesto. He whistles at me. I whistle at them. You know, Kathleen is, is very skilled at moving in the boat in a way. I know personally that masks the situation. However, I, if I see something, I'm calling them on it. And I think that's the way we have to do it locally because it's not practicable to have judges. But I think opening up our, I think we have a really good situation Right now, we just need to continue to expand and, you know, develop the way that we're going to police it, particularly at the bigger events. I think at the big events, we're getting to a point where at least I felt, uh, Victor, you, you finished well and you, you were able to, to compete at a higher level than I, than I did, but, and you too, Louis. But I felt like things were pretty well behaved and I, with the exception that the, I think the Brazilians have developed uh, a technique to body pump without the late mainsail flicking. Now, then, is this necessarily bad <laughs> or wrong? I don't know. We have to, we have to study that. But uh, at, at the same time, I think overall the fleet was very, very well behaved. And we don't need to change a lot here. And again, any changes we make, Pietro, need to be measured back to how it's going to affect our growing the class. It's all about growing the class. Okay, thank you, Ogi. Uh, Pedro, again. Yeah, I, I agree with, with Ogi. Uh, the hard part is to make all the fleet behave well. But uh, my point is always that we need to be fair to all the fleet and having judges that don't have the skills to judge correctly and even the rules have uh, a lot of holes 
Uh, I can tell you that my son in laser, when there's light wings, he's looking for the guy that is in front of him or in, near him to have a light wind match racing body. What they do, they are not allowed to attack very often, but if they are doing match racing, they are allowed. So before the race starts, they join two by two, having match racing buddies, and they are attacking, 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 just doing a match race. And because they are com direct competitive competitors, they are allowed to do it. So sailors will always go around these rules. But the technique of the Brazilians are like the sailors, are, are like the lasers. They go low a bit, then they go high. And, and the movement of, of going high, because they are changing the course, they are allowed to get the main in. And the way they get the main in, it's the key of the success of they going, doing it so well. So there's always a, a, a way of going around the rules and that doesn't make uh, races fair. My point is we need to do something uh, in order to have the races fair. My son lost a, a, a big championship uh, a couple of months ago just because the jury that was there allow everybody else in, in, around him to jive three, four times per minute. And I was there. It, it was amazing how can the jury allow that. He just lost the championship because the guys that was in, competing with him uh, were doing that. So too often we are losing races because it's not a, a fair uh, competition. And I, I think the way is to have it free in some kind of winds, in some kind of conditions, but have it free because having it free, it's fair. If uh, there's other way of controlling it, I'm, I'm not aware of it. Okay. I, I will totally agree. I just want to have fair races. Okay, Kathleen. What's the question again? <laughs> <laughs> so the freaky night is benefit having more professional, more athletic uh, crews. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and that's where that's where I I worry is that yeah, definitely the the, the bigger crews, bigger crews, stronger crews, as Augie said, already have an advantage. Um, but I think there is a window when it gets windier, very windy, like reaching, where I think um, you know, as somebody already said, the top people are already ahead, but it could actually be more fun for everyone everyone if they can pump down waves um, and move around a little bit more but it definitely bigger stronger people have a much bigger advantage and I think if you start allowing that at the local levels you'll really lose some of the lower end sailors so at least in I'm speaking from um, United States North American perspective and perhaps also Italy um, when you have countries where you have a lot of younger guys like Brazil Spain maybe they would enjoy um, being more active and physical. I, I think each country is a little bit different in that respect, um, but definitely it would give a huge advantage to people who are um, stronger, younger, more athletic. Okay, Antonio? Antonio? Well, uh, I believe that the strength of our whole class is that uh, professional sailors compete with uh, uh, weekend sailors and uh, you know, uh, they are not at the same level, but but our boat allow this competition. And I believe that uh, allowing free kinetics, uh, the difference uh, between uh, professional and more athletic and more trained uh, careers will be enlarged and uh, this will be a detriment for the growth of the class. Um, that's why uh, I believe that free kinetics uh, is a risk, is a risk. Our boat is 85 years old and it still attracts people because uh, uh, everyone can compete together. There are not uh, races only for professionals and races only for amateur or weekend sailors or family sailors. Um, 
uh, I can't believe that uh, anybody can uh, uh, buy a NACRA, 70, uh, NACRA 17 or a 470 and go out and sail with uh, the professionals. Uh, in Snipe, you can, you can do that. And we must, uh, we must keep uh, this uh, uh, pro of our boats uh, still uh, in force because uh, if, if not, I believe that we will lose people sailing in the snipe. Okay, thank you, Antonio. Victor, what do you think? Yeah, I think in light wind it would definitely be better for more professional and people in better shape. But I don't think, to be honest, that many people would be happy with, uh, let's say, banning the Rule 42 in light wind. I think we all agree that in light wind would change so much the snipe class to something that is not what most of the snipe sailors like. And in the strong wind, I'm not so sure. I think that sailing fast uh, in every condition, upwind, reaching and downwind, in strong wind, it has a very difficult technique with the rule 42 that needs a lot of hours and also to be in very good shape. And I'm not sure that allowing rule 42, it would become something even more difficult or maybe easier. Because this technique that some top sailors have developed to actually pump without getting whistled, and I'm saying also upwind, especially as the crews pumping and so on, it's also very difficult and it needs a lot of hours of training. So maybe leaving this open and free for everyone would make it more fair. Obviously, it's going to be very tough and it's going to be very physical because that is not, that we're not going to change it. But I don't think in the strong it will become something like it would be in the light wind, like one on each side and healing the boat from one side to the other. I mean, if the boat is planning, you are going to sit in a position where you have a good boat control. If you are reaching, you are going to be hiking. If you are downwind, you are going to look for a stable position because the boat is quite unstable itself. And obviously, you are going to try to serve the waves as, as better as you can. But I don't think the difference would be so huge. And I would be everyone would be more relaxed about the technique and you could develop a better technique than having always in mind like, oh, I already pushed the main ones in this wave. I have to stop for the next wave, even that I could get maybe two or three knots more if I could go down this way. You know what I mean? I think it will be something more fair for everyone. I'm only talking about strong wind when we have planning conditions. So which, In light wind, I which think limit? It's nice. which, which is the limit for you? When the boats are planning, when I don't know if that's uh, 15 knots maybe, when you are overpowered in the, in the upwind all the time, so in the downwind and the reach in the boats are planning, I think in this condition, it would be more fair and maybe even easier to make the levels uh, more similar, to make the sailing more attractive. Because at this moment, I think there is a huge gap between maybe the 20 or 30 top sailors in the world and the rest of the fleet in this condition. And I mean, I mean a gap on speed. I think there's much more difference on speed in these conditions than on medium or light. Win. If you want to be top 10 in a race in the world, it's much more easier to get the level in light or medium wind than in 18, 20 knots. And I think this technique is very difficult and it, it might be easier if you wouldn't have to be thinking about rule 42, but just about going as fast as possible. Because it's always going to be tough and it's always going to be physical. This, it's impossible that we change it. Okay, Luis? Well, um, first of all, uh, my my only interest, uh, if we consider this, will be to not needing the juries. It's the only thing that it can improve something of our organization. I don't think that the sailing will be better with free kinetics, and I completely agree with Oggy when he's considering all the fleet in our class, which is a big majority of uh, uh, people that is uh, older, if you want to call it that way, or, or, or not that fit, not as fit as, as some sailors. Uh, I know the rules are not perfect, uh, not everybody follows it, but I think they are really pretty good. And again, uh, the juries are getting better and better with the years. Uh, there's always a situation that are unfair, uh, I watch them all the time, and it's really, really important, the part also that Koli mentioned about calling, uh, uh, calling the other, your competitors. Uh, we are not doing that. We are not doing that. We are leaving that for the juries. Um, that is not smart. I don't think the class, um, the sailing can be more fair 
no, in, in light winds, there is no discussion in my view, uh, not even in, in hard wind. Uh, I was there in 1985 when Santiago Lange won the, the wars, rounding the marks in 20 position and with the crew standing and kicking the front deck of the wooden boat, planning in 30, 40 knots, passing everybody. Uh, he was the best, but uh, that was not the snipe sailing at least I, I like to see and to practice. Uh, I think that goes against uh, the art of sailing. And yes, the people will, when, when you see that uh, in middle wind of low wind, when you see that you can sail one knot faster, rocking the boat one side to the other, you will do it. You will do it. And when you see that pumping five times in a row or standing in the boat, kicking the boat, you will catch every wave, you will do it. Why will you do it? I mean, it's logic. So uh, I don't really, the, the only interesting point of considering of, of, of allowing rule 42 is uh, the regardless not having all of them juries. But all the other, all the other reasons, uh, I, I really don't, don't agree that it will be more fair at all. Uh, I will be able to to do all the rule 42 uh, in more effective with more effectiveness that uh, than a sailor uh, that is uh, not a stop sailor. You know what I mean? Uh, it will it will increase the difference. And regarding it was mentioned about the Brazilian last thing regarding the Brazilians in the wars. I can talk about it because I was there and. I was first in the wars when they start, the, the wind build up and they start parading at my side, winning the races, all these races. Yes, they have a technique in which they are, they are kind of pumping a wind. We need to, with the juries, uh, get around it, but they really sail better. They really uh, shit in the sails more. They really keep the sails in the hand while everybody else, including myself, are she I cleaning the sails and their height more and their feet and they're fantastic sailors. So I don't really think that they are that good in heavy wing because they breach rule 42. No, they do it, but not that that is not the main reason in my view. So that that, that is uh that is my, my view on the rule. I, I I'm not a fan of rule 42 but I, I think it's way better than the alternative. That, okay. that I'm sure. Thank you, Luis. And finally, Ricardo Lobato. I'll be uh, quick. Uh, I don't think that you, you, we have to move to Oscar flag free pumping. I think you have a system. And uh, maybe, uh, listen, Kathleen, maybe we can try uh, for example, three pumps per wave on which maybe it can be more fun, you know, and more uh, uh, people can three more the same. We can do maybe a small adjustment where we we find that we bring more people, we, the sale will be more enjoyable. Maybe you can fix something like uh, the solar class has three pumping on the guy, you know, the, the spinning guy. Maybe we can fix something that uh, make his sailing more fun without changing the game. You know, uh, that's my opinion. But uh, on the on the other side, this make more difficult for the judge because uh, the judge uh, have to know more specific rules for each class. So this is another uh, other problem. If you start changing a lot, now we we are the standard rule. So any judges are supposed to, to apply the rules, you know. But but maybe maybe a small change can be uh, we can try. I don't know. Okay. Pietro, Pietro, can I can I say something? I think it's very important to do some testing before we make any changes. Yeah. And I can I tell you from like, I was saying that. Okay. Yeah. I can tell you from the limited testing that we do here locally that when we sail in strong conditions against Ernesto and Kathleen, and it's basically free pumping and free, because we're not, we're having fun. Uh, it's not even close. The difference is in a reach 
will be Ernesto and Kathleen 10 to 15 boat lengths faster, if not 20 boat lengths faster than myself, albeit an old guy, but with a pretty young athletic crew. But what if you even, have me? Even, well, so that's, a, <laughs> that's the thing. But, but you're ooching. You're grabbing the mast and pulling the, the boat from underneath you. Don't do that in races. That's just for fun. It's just more fun. Yeah, we're having fun, but I'm and I'm making the point. It's yeah, and it's off as a test. <laughs> Shut up. This is I'm on now right now. Be quiet. <laughs> but basically, the the point I'm trying to make is we need to do some testing, and we need to understand what'll happen when we put in maybe even something like what Ricardo says. You know, because already you're doing a weather leg upwind, then you're going on a reef, and you're going to allow three pumps. I can barely catch my breath by the time I get to the weather mark, much less be prepared to pump three times. So, you know, we need to make changes after we've done testing. Pietro. Yes, Pietro. The, the old words is for the Commodore. Go ahead, Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one last was one last thinking that uh, hearing hearing uh, Ricardo, uh, I, I was thinking um, from all the rules in the rule 42, the one that I think is the probably that it, it will change less the class and it will allow uh, to be more fair in the class is the pumping, and I will tell you why because a class has a problem in the between the 14 and the 16 knots because of the difference of weights that the crews the different crews we have crews from 120 kilograms kilograms to crews that have 150 kilograms uh, 155 so uh, in the middle between 12 13 knots and 16 below 12 nobody surfs a wave and above 16 everybody surfs a wave but in the middle uh, it's pretty unfair, especially if, especially if the if we go to a reach very fast uh, and the wind goes a little low, half of the fleet is planning and half is not. That is why I proposed several years ago to increase the wind to 16 for reaching, so everybody. Yeah, can I know you plan. Have, you want to kill me because no, uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but, you want to the, kill me because I usually usually say light, but. All, what I, I lose uh, upwind, I can, uh, I can uh, gain uh, on the reaches. But yes, well, I know, I understand it's a good, uh, it's a good yeah. point. Okay. You can, always get a, you can always get a heavy crew, but uh, a guy of 90, 95 kilograms cannot get a crew of 30 kilograms. So I think that in that situation, and uh, quoting again uh, what Ricardo said, I think that above some wind, let's say for the talk, 12 knots, that allow free pumping, which is, by the way, one of the more different things um, that and the thing that get, takes more time from the jurors to evaluate. Allowing pumping could maybe not be that bad, and maybe will be more fair to equalize uh, equalize the 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 surfing in 13, 14, 15 knots. I think in, we need to try it if we consider, as as Ogi says, but. I think that from all the things, I will never be in favor of hooching or, or anything else that changed or rocking and everything else that changed a, a snipe not looking like a snipe again. So that's, that's the, the thing. Okay, super. Thank you, everybody. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. And see you soon on the race Thank you. Course, I hope. <laughs> yeah, <Ciao. laughs> we hope. We all hope. <laughs> Okay, thank you.